And now it's time for the further adventures of Big John and Sparky. Today's chapter is entitled, Sparky is Found. Almost. Well, if you've been following our daily adventures, you know that Sparky's been missing for a few days. He ran away from home. All due to a misunderstanding, of course, but nevertheless, Sparky is gone. And no one seems to know where he is. The police are looking for him, the Army, the Air Force, the Navy, the Marines, uh, the Secret Service, and even the Worldwide Detective Agency Network, of which Yuki Butcher is a part. One of Yuki's detective friends called in to give information on Sparky, and, well, it's so funny the way it happened that I'll have to sort of play it over for you. Listen. Yes, good work. All right, keep you informed. Goodbye. Big John, Mayor, that was some good news. Has Sparky been found? Uh, he's as good as found, Big John. What, what do you mean, as good as found, Yuki? Well, that was one of our private eyes who was part of a searching party I have formed to look for the lad. He says that he knows where Sparky is, right at this very minute. You're kidding. No, I'm not. The little lad is in a drugstore eating the chocolate ice cream soda. A detective called from a telephone booth in the same drugstore. He is watching Sparky at this very moment. Hey, that's wonderful. Where is the drugstore where Sparky's eating a soda? Well, you see, it's, uh... How's that? I said, where is the drugstore that, where, where the detective is watching Sparky eat a soda? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty stupid of me. <laughs> I forgot to ask. Well, who was the detective who called you? If you know who he is, then you'll surely know where he's located. Well, what do you know about that? It's another little detail I overlooked. Yuki. Fine. You mean to tell me that you don't know who the detective was and where he called from? Yeah, seems as how that's the case, Mayor. One hundred percent correct. And not so fine. Oh, Yuki. Your detectives are looking for Sparky all over the world. That call could have been the that call could have come from just about anywhere. Right. One hundred percent correct it again. Oh, Yuki, you dumb snoot. Sit down and try to figure out who that detective was so as we can know where Sparky is right now. Mayor, I've been sitting here thinking and thinking and thinking, but I can't seem to recall whose voice that was that I talked to on the telephone. Oh, me. Yuki. Ain't you got enough sense to ask a person you're talking to on the telephone what their name is? Well, now, Mayor, I always figure when I talk to somebody on the telephone, if they thought it was any of my business to know who they are, they'd go ahead and tell me their name. Oh, me. Yuki, that there fellow who just called you reporting to you to tell you that he found Sparky. You'd think the first thing you'd do in a case like that would be to ask him who he is and where he is. Well, Mayor, when I heard that he was actually watching the lad right there at that very moment when he was talking to me on the telephone, I got so excited I forgot all about asking him where he was and who he was. Yuki, but you, you are nothing but a dumb snoot. Just a plain, ordinary, everyday, out-and-out, fathead dumb snoot. Now, Mayor, I beg to differ with you. You are so. I am not. No such thing. You are so. Oh, so my head's not so fat. Matter of fact, it's kind of thin. People always say that I had a thin head. Well, you sure have. The brain inside it's even thinner. Fine. Oh, Yuki, you are a dumb snoot. A D U double um dumb S N W snoot. Dumb snoot. Now, wait a minute, fellas. There's no use arguing about this. Chances are whoever that detective was who called Yuki will call back. And then we'll know where Sparky is and, and we'll get him to bring him home. Well, I hope so. But if that there private detective who just called is anything like Yuki, he'll probably forget who he is and who he's supposed to call in case he does see Sparky. We may never hear from him again. Oh, now, Mayor, I, I don't think it's that bad. Now, you just watch and see. We'll be getting another telephone call from the detective, and he'll be calling to say that he has Sparky in custody and he's ready to bring him home. Well, if he's a dumb snoot like Yuki is, he won't. Yuki, what makes you like you are? Why do you act like you do sometimes? Oh, you get me some man I could buck you on the beezer. Oh, that's fine. I like you too, Mayor. Uh-oh, there's the telephone again. Hey, wait a minute. I'll bet that's my private eye. Uh, this is person's investigator on the telephone probably calling me back to tell me about the mistake we made. Excuse me there, fellas, and I'll answer it. Well, this private eye secret investigator, Yuki Butcher speaking. I hope that's our man, Big John. I'm sure it is, Mayor. Shh, listen. 
Well, fine. I'm glad you called back. See? It's him. I told you so, Mayor. Say, before you say another thing, where are you calling from? You don't say. You don't say. You don't say. Well, where's he calling from, Yuki? Don't fall for that old gag buster. Yuki will just say he didn't say. Now, Mayor, this isn't any time for jokes. Where is he calling from, Yuki? He's calling from the city jailhouse at Wheeling, West Virginia. Wheeling, West Virginia? Fine. Has he got Sparky in jail? Are they holding him there until we can come down there and pick him up? No. Seems this here private eye detective was arrested for trying to take a chocolate ice cream soda away from a little girl. A little girl? Yeah. Seems the little boy he was watching eat that ice cream soda, the little boy he thought was Sparky? Yeah. Wasn't the little boy after all. It was a little girl wearing blue jeans. Oh, for goodness sakes, will you hang up that telephone, Yuki? Hello? Yeah. Sorry about that. Better luck next time, old buddy. Bye. Oh, boy. Another false alarm. Yeah. That's all we need is another false alarm. Yuki's the biggest false alarm of them all. Yuki, I don't know who's the biggest dumb snoot, you or some of your friends. Well, we just had a little bad luck, that's all. Almost had the lad back, though. Just turned out to be a little boy the private eye investigator was watching. It wasn't a boy at all. It was a girl. That was pretty close. There's the doorbell. Will you answer it, Yuki? Yeah, fine. Oh, Mayor, this is getting to be too much. I know what you mean. I thought sure we had Sparky that time. Yeah, so did I. I'm telling you, that Yuki Butcher gets me so mad. He is such a dumb snoot. Oh, is he a dumb snoot? Him and that Thad McKinney, they're two of a kind. Well, he couldn't help it, Mayor. After all, it's the private detective who filed things up. It wasn't Yuki's fault. I guess not. But that Yuki could come up with a friend who acts like he's got some brains once in a while. Ah, uh, come on in here, Mr. Squelchfeather. Hey, look who's here. Big John Oliver Q. Squelchfeather, special agent for the United States Mail of America. Howdy, Big John. Howdy, Mayor. Got a letter for you, Big John. You owe me three cents postage, do you? Three cents postage, do? That's right. That's right. Found a letter for you here in my mailbag. Don't have any stamp on it, so I have to collect three cents postage, do you? Here's a letter. Okay. Here's your three cents, Mr. Squelch. Hey, wait a minute. This letter. What's the matter with the letter, Buster? Look, it's from Sparky. I can tell it by the handwriting on the envelope. Oh, is that right? What's the letter say, Buster? See, it says, Dear Big John, please do not try to find me. I do not want to come back. I am happy where I am. I just wrote this letter to you so you'd know I am all right and well and so you wouldn't worry. Find your friend, Sparky. Well, what do you know about that? Mr. Squelch, where'd you get this letter? All I know is, Big John, it was in my mailbag. I don't know where it came from. Never asked questions. I just deliver the mail in my bag and read the postcard. <laughs> Mayor, look at the envelope that this letter came in. There's no stamp, there's no postmark, there's not a thing that would tell us where this letter came from. Mayor, I'm convinced. Sparky has returned to the land of make-believe, and he's using the land of make-believe magic to get this letter to us. Well, if he is, Buster, I don't know how we'll ever get him back. Who oh, me if this isn't a mess. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. <laughs> I wonder how that there letter from Sparky got here without having a postmark on the envelope. In fact, I wonder how that there letter from Sparky got into Mr. Squirrel's Feather's mailbag without having a stamp on the envelope. Maybe the mayor and Big John are right. Maybe Sparky Lad is back in the land to make believe. Maybe you don't need stamps to send mail from there. Probably don't put postmarks on envelopes either. Now, let me see. How can I get to the land of make believe to find Sparky? Oh, <laughs> my 